everybody this is just a brief update here really to show you what has happened since the last video update for building stuff in the garage uh, as you can see well there is some some differences I am currently waiting on some items from Gage Master and Hattons Hattons I am waiting for a set of well a load of flexi track so I can start mocking some stuff up and down up and down just start mocking some stuff up and the other thing I'm looking for from Gage Master, which I think waiting for from Gage Master, is some of the DCC Concepts foam underlay. Everything is currently out of stock or ready pre-ship uh, and away you go. Now I did get a delivery from Hattons. Um, so I ordered a set of 25 lengths, I think it's 25 lengths of Flexible track, Pico Code 100 flexi track in the concrete sleeper, and also a Pico gauge, well, you know, the gauge, which allows you to sort of, you know, space the track out correctly. So, as it happens, after I'd made the order, I realised that I had one of those. I didn't cancel it. Now I did assume that they would probably send the track and the gauge together. Uh, but apparently not so they have actually um, sent me the package they've charged me three quid I think probably for postage and uh, let's shall we see what's inside uh, and I bet you can guess exactly what is inside that because it's certainly not flexi track As expected, it is the Pico six foot gauge. And so, what exactly did I get? So, so it's um, cost me forty two pence and two pounds seventy five p to be sent for that. Now. I was hoping that maybe they would dispatch. Somebody might have thought about it and said, you know what, they've got an order, this, and a load of track. And perhaps, perhaps, they might have decided to send this only once the track was available, but obviously not. Anyway, there you go. Maybe there's an option. Maybe there is an option on the website that you can only get everything dispatched at the same time once everything is in stock and perhaps I missed that and if I did hands up and apologies Hattons for this little rant. One other thing that I've recently purchased is this set of metal drawers. Uh, they are from Halfords they were on 20% uh, off at the moment. The reason I got them is that you can it is obviously lockable which is quite handy to be able to lock up and the reason for this was to be able to put my rolling stock somewhere they come with a nice little bit of the foam at the bottom there and I thought well um, I'm currently storing a lot of my stuff in plastic boxes similar to those and I thought maybe this would be a good option to be able to put my locos in it's uh, on a trolley but I will screw it back fix it back to the wall and I will eventually be able to get rid of some of the, you know, what uh, most of my trains are in there. Apologies, it's a little bit on the dark side. So you can see most of my rolling stock sits in boxes like that, or locos, and like that. So the other thing I've been doing is I've been basically building a load of these Merg kits. These are all the Cameo kits. Some of them are uh, ones that I built and had to buy all the components for. The other ones like these ones are ones that I brought directly from Merg, which are like official kits. They allow you, these are very complicated. You need to look at the Merg website, but the, the idea behind these is that I can basically utilize these to control servos for points 
and the reason why these are at 90 degree angles is so I can put a daughter board on top which also allows me to put relays to allow frog switching so I'm quite looking forward to setting all that up at some point obviously I need some points to do the frog switching for and that will come so the other last thing I did was I've just put basically I've got the 18 mil birch 12 on top and I was just basically seeing how high that was and this is kind of where I would have a station and trains running through. The idea at the moment is the train will come through and underneath here and out into the distance and then come back round. So this is really just to see what 10 cm is like. Uh, once I get the DCC Concepts foam uh, and some flexible track, I can obviously measure up the heights, make sure everything can clear that. Uh, and then I've got a good starting place. Uh, this will continue round. Uh, around the back here there should be a slope that goes down and allows up and one that comes up and allows trains to come on and off of this particular station. No idea yet how big to make the station or what kind of style. I'm thinking it'll probably be very small, kind of maybe a mid-size country, slightly larger town station, maybe just two, might have four tracks, so four platforms, or it could have just two platforms with a straight through set of tracks in between. We will have to wait and see. So I've started to add some of the stock, rolling stock in, and as you can see, um, I found that I brought something called, or this was made by a company called Parkwood Art Supplies, but apparently I think they went into voluntary administration. But this is fantastic. If I could find somebody who makes something of a similar style, which could, which could fit the full width of this. This would be fantastic. This, it could be slightly thinner. It doesn't need to be as thick. Well, I have currently, as you can see, I'm currently using some of the little plastic covers that come with in that kind of uh, packaging on top of there. So at the moment I've got um, a few of my coaches sitting in, in that one. Uh, down the bottom I haven't unpacked but I've got a few more sitting down here. Um, obviously it'd be really nice to be able to get something similar to this to put all that, all that rolling stock into. Especially to make it lifting out, that would be brilliant. But again it doesn't need to be quite as thick on these edges because um, I'm not actually transporting them anywhere. That's a bit of a excess. I'm not actually transporting them anywhere so I don't need a huge amount of padding, just go for stability. Uh, again, this one is currently empty. Again, you can see that the, because they're quite light, they do they do move around a fair amount. It'd be nice to have some ink that doesn't allow that um, up here. So this is the kind of um, central bit on that, that one that I just showed you. Uh, perfect for sitting in between the actual locos. I could do with some more of that, as you can see, there's a fine line in the centre, it'd be brilliant. Wouldn't need it as thick as that. Half that thickness would be fantastic. And at the top, I have put in, I have cut up some of the original foam that came in one of the other boxes. Uh, I had spare. So as you can see, I've got uh, a few of my HSTs at the top here. And a couple of class 37s. And there's one away in the back. And a black five sitting over there. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Although, as I said, it'd be really nice to be able to have something more like the art supplies one down the bottom. Again, the ones that I got in the boxes do fit in, but realistically, you just don't need that level of thickness between some of the rolling stock. Uh, some of these larger locos really struggle to fit in there. I have to cut little holes in the actual foam just to allow the, the couplings to not get all bent out of shape. Probably a little bit better actually, isn't it? Or is it just yes, yeah, it's sitting a bit low. So yeah, yeah, that looks uh, looks quite neat so far.